Good evening to everybody at the Speech Fever's Toastmasters Club. It is amazing to see all the guests and members. And I would like to quickly apologize for the delay that was caused in opening the meeting room at this evening because we were experiencing some issues with the Zoom in general. At the same time, we were also experiencing some issues in terms of opening the meeting room in general. So we'll try to see to it that that does not happen again, although it has happened a couple of times already. And this is the 724th meeting of the Speech Fever's Toastmasters Club. Yes, 724. I'm not even lying, 724. I think I joined the club and it was probably, I don't remember, I think it was over 100 meetings ago when I first stepped into a Speech Fever's meeting. So it's been quite a long time. It's nice to see all of you, nice to see Toastmaster, Nasneen, Gunjan, so many people in the room. And of course, we have a bunch of new members as well. And that's why we are going to have a very, very interesting induction ceremony. We're going to have a couple of prepared speeches. Our postmaster of the day is going to double up. Yes, she's going to double up and she's going to deliver a speech while playing the role of the postmaster of the day. And then we'll have a very, very interesting table topic session from postmaster Shubhi, who will be doing it for the first time ever. But that said, I think there are a few things that we should keep in mind uh, during a postmaster's meeting. Uh, most importantly, uh, please keep your microphones muted at all times, except when you're invited to talk. And secondly, I would request all of you to applaud all the speakers and uh, table topic speakers and road takers because it takes a lot of effort uh, to come into a meeting room and do something like this. So all you have to do is give a thumbs up or just a round of applause. And then please refrain from uh, talking about anything that's along the lines of uh, sex, religion, or politics uh, to avoid hurting the sentiments of everybody around us because all of us have our own personal beliefs. But on that note, yes, and yes, I forgot one more cardinal rule. And that is, please keep your videos on. I see a lot of people with their videos off. I don't know why exactly. I'm, I'm doubling up today. And then we have a couple of others that are doubling up. All of, us have, all of us have our videos on. So I request all of you to keep your videos on, except when you're moving in and around the room, or in case of you are in a circumstance that doesn't allow you to turn your video on. So with that said, uh, we're going to quickly go over uh, to the first segment of uh, today's meeting. And for that, I'd like to invite the presiding officer for this meeting. Our presiding officer is Toastmaster Joseph Felix Benedict. Now, I don't think I have to introduce him at this club anymore because I've introduced him numerous times over the years. And he is one person, or I would say he is the most well-dressed person in this room right now. Now, that obviously means it's not me. It is uh, Toastmaster Joseph. He comes with a lot of experience at Toastmasters, heavily passionate about the club. And he's in a second stint as the president of the Speech Papers Toastmasters Club. He's also the area director at District 117. Uh, and he comes to over 30 years of experience as a civil engineer uh, who's stationed at uh, Saudi Arabia. So sky's the limit uh, to what uh, Toastmaster Joseph can do. So over to you, Toastmaster Joseph uh, Felix Benedict, after signing off the Thank you, Toastmaster Adarsh. You made my day today by your graceful addressing. Good evening, uh, Toastmasters, and my dear guest, and especially our area uh, division director, DTM Sauru. I ask everyone to open up their uh, mic and give a great applause on the birthday, happy birthday to Toastmaster DTM Sauru. Now I open, declare the meeting in order, meeting number 724. I was thinking about what to speak on today. And luckily I had a choice that on 16th, the world over celebrates what is known as the Family Remittance Day. Each year, 200 million migrant workers in 40 rich countries send remittance to over 800 million relatives in 125 low and middle income countries. Remittance directly impact the lives of more than 1 billion people, either as senders or receivers. Global remittance are three times greater than official development assistance. In 2022, more than half of the 
US dollar 626 billion remittance sent to low and middle income. The Global Forum on Remittance, Investment and Development is a UN recognized informal process that brings together stakeholders working on remittances, migration for development. Since 2007, GFRID has held biannual summits on the International Day of Family Remittance with participants from the public sector, private sector, UN organizations, and civil society representatives from different regions. Here, partners share learnings on how to maximize the impact of remittance, reduce transfer cost, and enhance coordination. GFRID is a key instrument to raise awareness of and promote migration and remittances for sustainable development. It is also an important tool to implement the global compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration. There was a meeting from 14 June to 16 June. It is today the last day in partnership with UNOSAA and the World Bank. This event and the UN Office of the Special Advisor for Africa are hosting the Global Forum on Remittance and Investment Development. I, as a person who worked 30 years in Saudi Arabia, it was really hard time for me for the remittance. There are several rules as and when it's going on changing. And finally, because of the terrorism, they reduce the remittances. And we have to produce our salary certificate that we are eligible for this much of remittance. We have to stand in a queue. The different banks, there's a heavy rush. It's a lot of things that you have to undergo. And I have really endured all these things until such time they go on making it more easy for the foreigners to remit the amount. So this was all. Usually in India, they always wait for the remittance to reach their home because they all depend upon the workers who from their family has gone to many countries, in the, especially in the Middle East, so that they can send money to their parents on time so that there should not be any difficulties in getting the money and their surveillance also. Now I would like to announce our club has become the President Distinguished Club during this, this month, I would say. All this depended on a person who recently joined our club and made a vow and effort stating that she determined to say, that I will make this club a president distinguished club within your tenure. She never slept, nor she allowed me to sleep. Persistence was always there, night and day, trying to influence people to join going from one place to another place, like Malaysia, Singapore, and all those places, thriving for the membership. And finally, she succeeded. Ever since she came, she was always on the verge of taking the club to the next level. And at last, she, in the night around 10 o'clock, she said, Congratulations, President. Your club has attained President Distinguished Club. And it is none other than 
Toastmaster Nasneen. Give a great round of applause to Toastmaster Nasneen for this wonderful effort of making the club a present distinguished club. All credit goes to her for the efforts. I would like to introduce the new members who have readily accepted the membership and they are from Singapore. Toastmaster Bala Venkat is a passionate public speaker based out of Singapore who sincerely believes words can truly inspire and change lives. By profession, he's a data-driven digital banker who also loves to sing and dance whenever he can get a chance to do so. To publish a book and direct a movie is still in his bucket list. Thank you so much, DTM Balavankar. The second person is DTM Brahma Kumar. Actually, Balavankar, during the month of February, he participated in our meeting as a uh, what you call the, the, the panel discussion when Matthew Vergis was the keynote speaker sometime in the front of February. He kindly responded to us together with Veena Manor. The second person is DTM Brahma Kumar. The distinguished Toastmaster Brahma Kumar is a celebrated Toastmaster from Singapore who can network you with the entire community of Toastmasters, experienced leaders who have served Toastmasters internationally immensely, an educational session, presenter, an MC, motivator, and a proud chameleon. Toastmaster Brahma Kumar, he was with us when I was the president in January 2022. He helped us a lot throughout the year, and thank you so much to DTM Brahma Kumar. Give a round of applause to DTM Brahma Kumar. Toastmaster Naudin. He's a young, extremely talented software engineer working with JP Morgan and Chase. She's an ambitious young woman who is passionate about building a character that reflects her ideologies about giving back to the community in various ways, especially via leverage of technology. She's a deterministic and persistent in her efforts towards progress, as well as leading, being a responsible team player. Top skills, agile methodologies, agile application development, in turn, worked full time in JP Morgan Chase project at Art Park Center of Robotics, Automation and Intelligence, Brand Ambassador, International Center of Culture and Internship. The projects, mobile application of payload, carrier health monitoring system. Thank you so much, Naurin Fatima. I give you a great round of, of applause for Fatima. Toastmaster Miran is a student at Pre PES University, majoring in mechanical engineering, a hackathoner, and football and cricket player in his university team. Toastmaster Jayamala is not present today and uh, Thank you so much for joining our club, Toastmaster Jay Mala. We have our, we already have our two of the persons, Toastmaster Shubhigar, as well as Toastmaster Richa, who joined our club, and thereby now our club has got a distinguished president, Toastmasters Club. So we are all happy on this day and therefore rejoiced the speech weavers club for this wonderful achievement. This could be because of our unity and strength that we have worked for and the leader being Toastmaster Nazneen. And 
Now she'll be taking over in the next term as the president of elect of this club. I wish all a very bright future for this master and last name. Give a great round of applause. Now it's time for us to give, hand over the stage to Toastmaster Nazarene. Over to you, the stage is yours. Good evening, Toastmasters and dear guests. All of you can unmute yourself. And especially to our guests, first, I would like to wish a special happy birthday to our DGM Saurav Dutta, without whom we wouldn't have been a distinguished club in this term itself, because he was the one, the brainchild behind all this. And no one knows about it because he is the person who just does it and forgets about it. He's made literally Toastmasters his home. And I think he feels that Toastmasters is his bread, bare butter, everything is Toastmasters. He's forgotten about his home and he's made Toastmasters. He's actually, if you see Sir DTM Saurav Datta, he's Toastmasters personified because without him, we would definitely have not reached this place. Uh, though Toastmaster DTM uh, Nagesh Sir is not present here, he also was very helpful in making us a distinguished club. Can we have a big round of applause to these two great uh, personalities? I would call them stalwarts because without who, without them, we wouldn't have actually reached this position. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure and honor for us to, for you to be in the meeting, for the first meeting as a president distinguished club. It's a great honor. Thank you so much. And for the new member, Annai Vana Vara Kum, Mallai Vana Kum, DTM Bala Venkat, Ungulla Vare Vera Kul Kilakum, for the CTV meeting number 724. I welcome you wholeheartedly. Can you open your uh, camera, sir? It will be really great. Thanks. Thanks, Ms. Master Nasani. Dawn of a new era. What do you think is the dawn of a new era? This is the dawn of a new era with the great stalwarts like Sir Data Sir and Bala Venkat Sir, DTM Bala Venkat, uh, DTM Bhav Bala Krishna, and all the others who have joined our club and made it to a distinguished president club, which wouldn't have happened if, if they were not there. If you all can see, just imagine that this is a time in life, you just have to live in the moment. And the dawn of speech fevers has started. The era is 2023, June 10th. We were actually declared as distinguished president club. I congratulate each one of you all and thank each one of you all for this. So, you can unmute yourself according to what do you feel is the dawn of an era. Anyone, I will I would uh, ask our newly new member that is uh, DTM Bala Venkat sir to uh, share his views about dawn of an era. Hey, thanks, uh, Toastmaster of the day, Nasni and. Uh... For me, the when I when you talk about dawn of the new era, I I always feel that every day is a new beginning. Uh, for me, I always feel that there is a 
I remember the words that if there is a, when there is today, there is tomorrow. When there is a night, there is a day. And every day is, is, a, is a day to start refreshing yourself and do things in a way that you would like to start fresh without any baggage. So I feel that every day is a new era. For me personally, this, this year has been a very, very rewarding uh, year for me as a Toastmaster. Uh, I actually, I'm now also in becoming the incoming president for another club here in, in Singapore. Uh, thanks to Saurav support and guidance, I became a DTM um, just last week. Um, then I kind of gone into uh, the division finals, uh, the district finals uh, for Singapore uh, in both table topics evaluation and won the international speech for Tamil. So it's been a very rewarding uh, year. So for me, the dawn is now every every single one of this reminds you that. that uh, you need to take more and more. It motivates you to do more and more. So let's let's understand that that every single reward, every single achievement is a motivation to do, achieve more and more. And thanks for, and that's why I think I'm looking at another new dawn and a new era with um, uh, with Speech Weavers Toastmasters Club as a new member. Back to you, Toastmasters. Club. Thank you so much for those. Uh, why, uh, wisdom, why, uh, words of wisdom. I totally agree that a lifetime isn't so long as you think. Three things are important. Your health, your mission, and the people that you actually love. And that is very important. I would now like to call upon stage the general evaluator for today's meeting. That is he was the past president of Smedley Speaker Society, area director for District 117, Division D, area 331. He is a senior technical leader at Cisco Systems and networking testing is going through a transformation with agile transformation and introduction of AI and ML. So can we have a round of applause for our general evaluator of today, that is Toastmaster Nadian. Thanks a lot, uh, Toastmaster of the day and the president-elect Nazneen ma'am. Today we have a wonderful session planned and I don't want to take too much time and uh, hold things up. We had an amazing start and a celebrative mood. Uh, we can um, move in with the key role players. We can first um, go to the uh, timer for uh, today. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Nadia. I'll quickly wrap up my introduction as a timer. I see that a lot of you in this room are Toastmasters. So today we have uh, two speeches. Uh, it'll be timed on um, both speeches are five to seven minute speeches, so I'll display the cards in the following manner. Please pay attention to carefully. At the fifth minute, I'll display the green card. At the sixth minute, I'll display the yellow card. At the seventh minute, I'll display the red card. And then similarly, we have a table topics in today's meeting, which will be timed on a scale of uh, one to two minutes with a grace period of 30 seconds. At the first minute, I'll display the green card. At one minute 30, I'll display the yellow card. At the second minute, I'll display the red card. So for the evaluators, you'll have around two to three minutes. So at the second minute, I'll display the green. Two minutes 30, I'll display the yellow card. At the third minute, I'll display the red card. So that is exactly what it is as a timer. And uh, we're already a little bit late in today's meeting. So let's try to wrap it up as we can see. Back to you, Ajit, the evaluator. Thanks, Lord Adesh. And um, for the R counter, we'll have you leave, right, Adesh? Uh, yes, as the accountant for today's uh, meeting, uh, not me, it's the uh, AI right there. So what we'll do is it'll sort of take into account all the as, ums, you knows. It can do better than, a, than what a normal human being can do. But please bear in mind that it was made by a bunch of human beings. So after the meeting is over, we'll publish the report on the road takers group, which you can uh, sort of uh, go through and understand how many as, ums, and filler words you've used. And you also have the opportunity of finding out what is your favorite filler word. That's it. Yeah, that for sure is dawn of a new era. 
the grammarian today is uh, Toastmaster um, Joseph Benedict, sir. Sir, can you take over the stage and explain your role, please? I haven't prepared for this one today. You can go ahead without the grammar, please. Sure, sir. And word for the day today is? Word for the I think Toastmaster last is Panglotion. Panglotion means relatively optimistic that city was up. Thank you so much. I'll put it up on the chat box. Others, you can just put it up on the chat box. Panglotion. Thank you, ma'am. Back to you, uh, Toastmaster, Toastmaster of the Day in Asneem. Okay. So Toastmasters began as a series of speaking clubs by Dr. Ralsi Smedley, the mentor, the mentor of all mentors. He held the first official meeting on April 24, 1924, with 3,052 members in 149 plus countries and more than 16,400 individual clubs across the world. A typical Toastmasters meeting is divided into three segments. The first segment being better speaking, that is prepared speeches. And the second segment is better thinking, that is impromptu speaking. The third segment is better listening, that is evaluation segment, which we all look out for. Now, without wasting much time, as time is precious, we'll go on to our better speaking segment, that is prepared speeches. The first speaker, the first evaluator for the speaker is, imagine in the, when I was small, I always used to go up, go up to celebrities and take a selfie with them. So, this speak, this person has now become a celebrity who needs no introduction as people run to him and to take a selfie with him. Can I have on stage DTM Saurav Datta as the first evaluator, evaluators of evaluator, DTM Saurav Datta to reach out the project guidelines for the target speaker. Thank you so much, uh, Master of the Day. So our target speaker today is attempting the project improvement through positive coaching. The purpose of this project is for the member to develop and apply skills for coaching a fellow member or a person outside of Toastmasters who can benefit from his or her expertise. The purpose of this speech is for the member to share some aspect of his or her experience in coaching. The member completing this project has spent time coaching a Toastmaster or another person who benefited from his or her expertise. I would be listening for a well-organized speech about the member's experience as a coach. The speech may be humorous, informational, or any style of the member's choosing. The style of the speech should support the content of the speech. The speech should not be a report on the content of the improvement through positive coaching project but a reflection on the impact of the experience. So apart from the general parameters that we look at when evaluating a speech like clarity, vocal variety, eye contact, gestures, audience awareness, comfort level, and interest, one thing that I would be particularly observing for is topical relevance, which means that is the speaker sharing some aspect of personal experience as a coach? All the best to the target speaker. Timer, please note that the time for this is five to seven minutes. All the best to the target speaker. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much, uh, Sir, uh, DGM Sarvata, for reading the guidelines. The speaker for today is Deepa Sampath Kumar. She's a in she's in public speaking and communication coach and a very passionate Toastmaster from five years. She has completed the advanced communication goal, advanced leadership grants from the legacy program and persuasive influence and engaging humor paths from pathways. 
She is four times Triple Crown awardee, Master Mentor awardee, Area Level Table Topics winner and Division winner in Evaluation Contest in 2022. Division winner in Evaluation and TT Contest in 2023. She's well known for her inter interactive communication workshops on a wide variety of topics from vocal variety, body language, storytelling to make a few. When she's not exploring, she's actually blogging. So the topic for today is, can you tell me who I am? Can you coach me? Can you coach me? The Deepa Sampar Kumar, can you coach me? The virtual stage is all yours. Please say, there is no shortcut to success. But I realized when I had a coach, that coaches and also mentors are shortcuts to success. A very good evening to everybody here at Speech Weaver's Toastmasters Club. A little over a year ago, I met a young lady in my club. And she was, she seemed very impressed with the way I spoke because she followed me to all my education workshops that I was giving at Toastmasters, missing not even one. And also, she went out of her way to compliment me on some of my skills. And one fine day, she asked me if I could be her mentor. Now you see, a mentor is somebody who has a long-term interest in the person, who sets about long, broad development goals for the individual. But then today I'm talking about how I coach this individual for a month. My student, was interested in one aspect very much. She wanted to get better at vocal variety. And for that, we had a month long sessions. We used to meet on Zoom weekly, but besides that, I used to give her some art tasks and activities every week to accomplish. Now to become a coach, it is very important to know and ascertain what this person needs, what this person wants. Having understood what she really wants helped me a lot. Listening to her previous speeches enabled me to ascertain her core strengths, which were already there, and to find out the areas where I could help her improve. And so my first task on my first Zoom meeting was to share my feedback on her speeches and tell her to self-reflect on her own speeches and let me know what she thought about her speech. And I also asked her, what is it about vocal variety you want to improve? And what do you think you're already good at when it comes to your voice? Now to protect her identity, I'm gonna name her Sneha. As Sneha said, Deepa, I think I'm happy with my enunciation, happy with my pronunciation, happy with the clarity of my voice. And I said, what do you want to improve then? And Sneha got confused. She, all she had to tell me was, Deepa, whenever I give speeches, my evaluators often tell me the same thing. All the evaluators point out the same thing. Can you improve on your vocal variety? And that helped me determine that she wasn't, is be, being a fairly recent Toastmaster, she wasn't aware of the basic elements of vocal variety. And I got her, to look into a speech craft program on voice and not just that, a workshop of mine on vocal variety. That's where she learned a, a broad set of, uh, of elements that went into speeches, for example, warm up, pitch, tone, pace, all of these are something that she got introduced to. And then I gave her the next task for the next week. I asked her, let's concentrate on tone for the next week. And I gave her a sh very short uh, um, excerpt from a speech and told her to speak it in several different ways. Three, I mean, three different ways. Now, enthusiastic as she was, she gave me 10 different ways to speak the same. And I was, as a coach, was in a fix. 
it is going to take me an, a more than an hour to look into each of them and then give a feedback. So what I did was I told her that I could, if, I, I will share the feedback for three speeches. So one of the things I learned as a coach that time was how to share that uncomfortable conversation where you see where you see that they're so enthusiastic but you still do not have that time to give them as much as they need and to set some um, clear instructions as to how you interact how much you can offer to the individual and I learned to do that in not just an encouraging way by, uh, by uh, telling her let's do three and let's reflect on each of them and also made her realize how much of a task it is by asking her to self-reflect on those recordings herself. And there were many parameters on which I taught her about how to elongate her vowel sounds to intonate and uh, to bring in emotions to the voice. Now this person had exaggeration going well, but had difficulty toning it down because this was the first time she tried it. And so I had to give her feedback often, telling her to tone it a little down. And that was the first um, part of the coaching experience, second week of coaching experience. In the third week, we concentrated on stresses and pacing. Again, an excerpt was given and we, uh, we had lives discussion on how we could work with pacing also suggested her several activities and shared some articles with her so that she could go through it herself. Now, I believe strongly as a coach, we are here to set their dreams to reality. We are here to set goals. We are here discipline, deadlines, activities that suit them and break those activities and, and tasks into really short pieces because that is what is called motivation. I do not believe that failure is a stepping stone to success. I believe that small success is a stepping stone to higher, bigger success. So that is that was what I was always looking for. Which is that one task I can give Sneha that she can easily accomplish that will increase her confidence and thereby increasing her motivation to learn more. And that's how it went. Another challenge area as a coach that I went through during those four weeks were undone tasks. There were times at which I felt I might have given a little too much of feedback, which might have gone overwhelming for her. And therefore she lost the motivation and failed to do some of the homework that I gave her. And uh, so it is very important. That is where I learned to break the task into small pieces. Uh, so that they accomplish it in an easier way. Coaching is a very satisfying experience. You share your knowledge, you share techniques, you share, you learn the psyche of another person and you make sure they reach where they're capable of reaching. Understanding each person is different and it's a very satisfying experience to have. I urge all of you to when you learn a new task to spread those seeds of learning to the next person around you because that is the best thing that you that we have to immortality we may leave, we may go away but what we teach others is left behind thank you thank you toastmaster deepa for that wonderful speech that you presented. Can you coach me? I would definitely ask you, can you coach me to a master Deepa? So the next evaluator for the speaker is someone who has recently joined a club, who is humbleness personified and a person who is who loves to dance and sing and he's passionate about things in life and is a, a bit introvert, but I'm sure that he will be a gem that is going to be in our club. I would request a newly inducted member of our, member of our club, DTM Bala Venkat, to read out the guidelines for the next speaker.
Thank you, Toastmaster, today, uh, Toastmaster Nasnin. The, uh, the, the purpose of this project is for the member to practice vocal variety or body language to enhance the speech. The speaker is attempting a speech from the path effective uh, coaching and will be doing a project from level one, P3, and the time sequence will be five to seven minutes. And the speaker can actually speak the on will present a well organized speech on any topic the speech may be humorous informational or any style the member chooses so i'm looking forward to rock with you on your vocal variety and body language all the best to the speaker thank you so much uh, evaluator for the next speaker the next speaker is a panglogian she is relentlessly optimistic. She loves to travel and eat lots of chocolates. And she's a voracious reader. And also she makes, she finds positivity in negative situation. And she has got a never give up attitude. Once she makes up her mind, she definitely doesn't give up. Banglogian says it all. So I now hand over the stage to Toastmaster Nazni. The Toastmaster Nazni, my Lebron James moment. Toastmaster Nazni, my Lebron James moment. The stage is all yours. 15 minutes, just 15 minutes. Everyone will remember in their life when they were vividly flash in front of your eyes at the last moment of your life, said Andy Warhol, who has actually given up his life to art and sculpture and building this world in a better place. Good evening, Toastmasters and dear guests. I'm going to speak about the world momentous 15 minutes of the match I played in my school. A match which was not just a match, but it was really literally a war against our enemies or rival school for decades to go. Since its inception in 1891, basketball has become very famous throughout the world but the rules and regulations remain the same. Some variations may differ and change, definitely for sure. In that moment, we decided that yes, all of us had engraved the rules and regulations in our heart and decided to win. As I stood with my schoolmates, that is my teammates, I was actually feeling very nervous. At the same time, I was feeling really brave. And I could hear my heart go. In the midst of the din of the cheering, the match was about to begin. And in the flash, the match was started. If one would step on that stay on the court, they would realize that it resembled an international finale, not just a school match. Why? Because there were two, there were two hundred odd students, principals from two different uh, schools and faculty. There was a lot at stake, not only for the players, but also for the audience. This has been going on till now. I will not take the name of the school, but it was a make or break situation. We stepped onto the court and the match began with a flash. The struggle was going on. And in that moment, in that one millisecond, I felt inner warmth and self-confidence. 
the match was going on and the struggle was going on tougher. We were in position of the ball and the ball was fast. I was standing right under the basket. I realized that I was at the Hercules who saved Athena. And I decided in the and it was the, the crowd was in a frenzy, hoping for a situation. My mind froze. My, I, my, I just froze. I could feel the beads of sweat running down my forehead. I could also feel the beat of the ear drums in my of my heart in the ear drums. I decided that yes, I will definitely do it. I with a quick lightning and the flash of for a second, I shot, I took the shot and I just threw the ball at the basket. Yes, yes, yes. The final whistle blew. And we had won the cup. Carpedium. Let's seize the moment. It was in those films from a nobody. I became the star of the match. These hilarious moments, definitely, I would like to remember throughout my life. Definitely. Those nostalgic moments, when I think about it, I seriously think, was it me? I would always advise everybody that never give up. Be relentlessly optimistic. Be a Panglosian. And I, being a Panglosian, definitely made sure that I did not let my team down. As Andy Warhol has said, rightly said, that everybody will become famous for those 15 minutes in their life, for those 15 glorious minutes, for those 15 glorious seconds. Every minute will be remembered and every second of those memories will be there in them. And the beast that was not unleashed until now, it will be unleashed in those glorious memories. Period. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Nazdeen, for that wonderful speech. And now we go on to the next section that we all have been waiting for. That is the table topic session. The table topic session will be held by our new member, that is Shubhi. She has graduated from IIT Mumbai and she's a tech savvy person. And she wants to improve her public speaking skills as well as leadership qualities inculcated in her. So the I request Toastmaster Shubhi to take up the stage and this virtual stage is all yours. Over to Toastmaster Shubhi. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Nazneen. Yeah. Thank you, Toastmaster Nazneen, for the... Uh, just a second. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, uh, uh, Toastmaster. Uh, Table topic. Good evening. Good evening, uh, my fellow Toastmasters and guests. Today I am going to perform uh, uh, the table top as a table topic master. So uh, the table topic mas uh, table topics are uh, there to help the members to present uh, the thoughts with quick preparation and uh, speaking for a couple of minutes within one to two minutes and. Uh, it helps us to build the to uh, build our thoughts and speak uh, quickly with minimum preparation. 
so today uh, the way we are going to perform the table topic session is in such a way that uh, it will be debate kind of thing so uh, the structure would be like uh, as you can imagine uh, the debates happen so we will call one person and give them uh, one topic then he or she has to speak for one minute and then we will call another person to speak uh, either in against or in favor of that particular topic depending on what first person has chosen if he or she has chosen if in favor then he uh, second person has to choose the against uh, team so uh, both have to then a second person has to speak for one minute and then both uh, and then first person again has one more minute uh, with that time uh, three, uh, one one third, one minute thirty seconds, one minute forty five seconds, and two minutes, uh, which shows us green, yellow, and red card. And again, uh, second person also has another one minute. So in such a way, we will give, we will take two, uh, take two persons on the um, stage, and uh, give them one topic, and they have to uh, speak uh, in the form of debate. So in such a way. Will perform our table topic session. Am I clear? Any doubts? No, should be. It, could you repeat it, please, if you don't mind? Okay. So uh, we will perform our table topic session in a form of debate. Let's say uh, I have chosen one speaker, uh, first speaker. For one topic, we will be having two speakers. One speaker will be speaking in favor and second person will be speaking in against of that topic so both the speakers will be having two minutes for first speaker one person will speak for one minute then we will choose another person after one person will finish for one minute then second person will come up and take either in favor or in against depending on what first person has chosen so he or she has to speak for that one minute. After he finishes, then again both the persons have to uh, one one minute each. So they can debate amongst each other, and timer will take care of the debate thing. So in such a way, one topic will be finished. Then we will choose another third person and give them another topic, second topic. Then he or she will speak for one minute. Then Again, we will choose a speaker four, or you can say speaker two for this particular topic. He or she will speak for one minute. Again, they will be given one one minute to debate on that topic. Now, is it clear? Yep. Thank okay. you. So, shall I proceed with uh, topics? Okay. So, uh, any volunteer? For speaker number one. I request all of you to turn your videos on. I think it is a very, very interesting concept uh, that uh, Shubhi has brought into the scene. I think I see a lot of interesting people. Uh, thank you very much uh, for turning on your videos, Nasni and everybody. I would like the rest of them to turn on their videos because there's a lot to learn in today's. I think we see a lot of interesting faces in the room, uh, Shubhi. I think you can go ahead and pick any one of your choice and you can handle it. Okay, so I would like to pick up uh, Toastmaster Joseph for speaker one and topic for you. Uh, you can choose. Uh, can you can you give this one to Pragya? I think uh, you should be the one to demonstrate first, then she would be able to get uh, the idea. Okay. Okay. So choose uh, any number from one to five. Four. Four, okay. So your topic is screen time. Is it really good or bad? Screen time, is it really good or bad? Or the present so technology you... calls for the screen time of meetings, debates, all other important meetings, and everything is in the network system. Not only that one, we can even connect to the world also. 
so that you don't have to travel from one place to another at the same time fulfill the obligation of anything that you wanted to have it same case we even with during the covid the teachers used to teach the students through screen network system in all this what we feel is that we have to face the screen it is it is immaterial whether you like it or not but that is only a possible way of connecting the people because there were restrictions on not to move not to go out and lot of other sops are there to follow covid toastmaster joseph we can pick another uh, person first and then you can continue i think any volunteer now pick a okay, number for this topic indian go with pragya if you want to yeah uh, punam is raising hand i think okay yeah Fine. Punam, uh, okay, you can con uh, you can continue uh, with this topic. Yeah, I would differ from my opponent what he is saying. Like during the present era, we need the screen time. But why do we need screen time? So much of screen time that is actually affecting our health. I believe. that covid was an era where we were bounded by the screen time we were connecting this and that after that immediately in every house i believe all the children had spectacles they had par why the reason was that they were over exposed to the screen those soft tissues could not handle the pressure people are now so addicted that they don't even bother who sitting by their side they don't know the phone numbers sitting by their side the two can uh, debate now each of you given the chance see, even today if you see every child is having a mobile in their hand forget about the rules and regulations or whether they are attending a school or meeting or not. every child is having it even in the family itself when they are sitting together they are not talking they are connected to external world this has become a habit of it now to break away this habit one has to have a serious effort in the delegating the somebody to see that the child does not use the sc screen at all but it has become evident that they are addicted to it we cannot help but one thing i can tell you, we connect the world the screen time and screen time whether it is bad or good even in the form of what you can say work from home got the people who are in us timeline they have to work from home and also get the back ache as well as the salary fat salary both are evident so i would what do i say my opponent is only saying we are having back aches so i think uh, someone is here experiencing the same do tell me don't we teach us ourselves also would like to preach that books are our best friends so we can always dedicate our time prioritize our time how do we handle those screen times we can always go for good information or news or chit chatting or video but there should be a limit to everything no shortcuts in the life will lead to success we always have to sacrifice something and if we sacrifice our discipline that is going to harm in our bad so i would suggest that everybody should prioritize things screen is no solution we can get equal amount of information and knowledge by connecting with other people in various different methods also every child likes offline classes more than online classes we like physical meets more than this of offline online meets so what do you think josh master yeah actually i would not be able to contact you on the screen if there is there is no screen i i should have to either come to your place to talk to you or you will come to my place now you see how it is so uh, uh, wonderful that i am talking to you on the screen it is inevitable you cannot miss the screen in life today 
what you are saying is just with the matter of time. We are connected for a few minutes, I think, on screen. I will be here speaking for a few hours maybe, but I am not glued to this screen 24 into 7, which I am restricting myself. I'm not what about people who are employed? What about people who are employed? They are bound to work for eight hours. Otherwise, that they won't get the paycheck. What do you do with that? You will forego your, as a breadwinner? You are bound to what take What about it. people who are actually working hard under the sun and earning? They under are the also sun, breadwinners for their families. They are different people. You are talking That's about... Fine. They are different the people. The people who rule. We are talking about the people who are administering the entire nation. If we don't have employees, there will be also. no employers. If there we don't already? have employees, there will be no employers. Right. There are many people who are not to Toastmaster Purnam and place. Toastmaster Joseph. As the timer, exactly. I would like to call the truce. I would like to call the truce. I would like to hand it back to our, our table topics yes. master. And uh, to just give you a bit of clarity, yes, wonderful job, a lot of applause, both our speakers. Uh, just to give you a little bit of clarity, yes, it's very simple. Uh, one minute to each speaker. So one minute for the first speaker, one minute for the second speaker, one minute for the first speaker again, one minute for the second speaker, and it gets over. But regardless, wonderful job, and uh, our table topics master still has more in store. Okay, so you might have clarity now. Now, second speaker. Who would like to take second topic? You to Pragya. Okay. Pragya. Fine. So, hi Pragya. Which number would you like to choose from one to five? Skipping. Five. Okay. So your topic is: Is social media making us unsocial? Over to you. Yes, absolutely. Social media is making us unsocial because I don't have a social media IDs and my friends told me and my friend circle I'm called as unsocialite person. And I was surprised. How can you call me an unsocial, non-social and all those words? How can you use that word? Just go and Google out our dictionary, use your dictionary to find the exact word of non-social or unsocialite person. How can you judge a person being online or having a social presence as a social? For me, social person is a person who, who is welcoming in the society, contacting with society people. It's not about having a social media presence, having thousand followers, having lakhs of friends on your Facebook IDs, but don't have any friend to talk in person. So I think, I, I think we can choose another person also now. It's one minute over. Any volunteer? Take hey, Asina. Asina okay. is there. Asina, are you there? Uh, Naveen, Naveen Parval. Okay. Yeah, I'll go for it. Okay. Yeah, continue, Asina. Over to you. Human beings are social animals. It is proven time and again that you, we human beings are social animals. We cannot be called that non-sociable and so social. We definitely have to interact with each other. Otherwise, definitely you're going to, as Ten Lord Tennyson said, to rest is to rest, rust unburnished. Yes, I also believe in the same thought that to rest is to rust unburnished. So therefore, moving forward, technology is the, what it is. Because what we are doing now is also technology. This is a form of AI. If you know that, that AI has actually entered into the lives of our mortals without even us realizing that this is AI. The meeting that is happening now is AI. So I would just like to end with saying that we human beings are definitely social human, social animals, and definitely we are not non-social. Over to you, Table Topics Master. 
Now one more bit. Okay. So social media, as the speaker correctly mentioned, that we are social animals, and that was said by Aristotle, if I'm not wrong, and that was way back when social media ideas didn't exist. At that moment, also we are social animals. So that means we need to connect with people rather than having social media IDs, having posting all those social media presence showcasing. Rather than let's connect one on one, that creates your your social well being. That creates how you become friends. How we, rather than having thousands of friends on Facebook or. people liking you on facebook on your post commenting on things good congratulations you never know whether you are talking with the same person or not probably the technology is developing so fast that chat gpt will be speaking with you and you are contacting only through ai that is not a social me that's not a the words you are a social animal you are a social animal to connect with society connect with human beings connect not with technology we are mistaking social media ids as an ai as a tool to connect no we it's just a means of connecting with the people it's not about having a presence should be required you even if you don't have a social media id you can connect with people you should connect with people in that so yeah so we both are connecting through ai so what do you say you have given the answer to yourself that yes we have to have social media presence human beings as you rightly said yes we need to actually have a personal connect but social media is the thing to go in the further technology is here to stay whether we want to accept it or not it will augment with the human force but it will not replace human force because it is we we create the algorithms for ai so therefore we should have the uh, we sh- the, the people who create algorithms for ai the emotional intelligence should be actually given uh, given as a leadership for qualities to them so that we can move ahead and augment it and not actually um just um uh, you know just get out of it augment it don't re- uh, remove the workforce so have that emotional portion definitely i'm sure that ai is here to stay and as stephen hawking rightly said the success of ai is going to be the best thing that could have happened to the civilization of event in the mankind or the worst think about it over to you to table to which master of the day thank you nasreen and pragya now you can choose somebody else yeah for the other topic so heading over to the next topic uh, any volunteer for next third topic Yeah, Navin can take it up. Navin, you can take. Okay. But you also choose another person right now only, so that they can have interaction perfectly. Yeah. So. Asin, <clears throat> Asin, Asina, Mama, Dar Kavita. Okay, Kavita. So, one, two, three. There are three topics. Uh, which one? would you like to choose kavita and navin three i would like to go for third topic okay so let's finalize so it is joined in the between uh, so is it kind of debate or how is it yes it is going like debate now uh, i will give you the topic you have to speak for one minute another speaker will speak for one minute then you both have to debate for another minute Am I clear? Okay. So, who will be uh, talking for, and who will be talking against the topic? Speaker one will have the choice. Speaker two will have to uh, choose the opponents of the speaker one. Like, if you choose favor, then speaker two has to choose the against uh, thing. Okay. So, topic number three is organic farming, good or bad. Who wants to start? Me or the person? Yeah. Naveen, you want to start? Yeah. 
Okay, that's all right. <clears throat> I um, I can start. Friends, ever, ever, ever since the humans have evolved, we have always been uh, be, uh, the, been conscious of our food habits. Of course, uh, our, our eating habits have evolved over the years. But however, in, in the past uh, 40, 50 years, there's been a huge transformation. There's been a huge transformation from the natural food to unnatural food. And that is the root of all the problems which have been taken place. Now, the thing is that we are so much used to processed food and, and processed things that we've forgotten how our ancestors used to live. Yes, and that's the reason organic farming is very important for us because we need to have the natural food, the natural life, and, and of course, the natural uh, environment. Hippocrates has once said that before you heal someone, ask him if he is willing to give up the things that made him sick. So are we willing to give up? Farming itself, it's good. How many of us in this English generation are doing farming? Probably will be uh, buying a lot of uh, uh, plants which has flowers uh, to decorate our balcony. But uh, are we really doing farming? So once you start with farming, then only will be able to think of whether you want to go with organic farming or non-organic farming. So instead of just pressurizing or giving emphasis on only the organic farming, let's encourage all the instances, especially uh, our generations are not doing uh, or not planting anything. We are not stepping out for farming anything. That's why uh, the vegetable prices are getting increased day by day. Since there is a huge demand in the market and uh, uh, one set of people are telling in the name of organic farming and they are doubling the product price. They're trying to sell it in the market, which is really not affordable by all the middle class people. Probably it is affordable by only high class, high middle class or high class people. So. Majority of the people in our population in our India are both middle class and lower middle class people. Thank you. Now, now the thing is that wherever there's a will, there's a way. For example, uh, like I was diagnosed with diabetes about a couple of years ago. So I chose to live a natural lifestyle. Although I'm not saying I've uh, achieved it completely, but however, wherever it's possible, I try to do it because uh, the thing is that there's a concept of farmers selling directly to the consumer. And of course, you have to make the effort to, uh, to get those type of food which you feel can make you more healthy. Avoid things where you feel that pesticide and a lot of ingredients have been added in it. Because remember that even if it is slightly more expensive, it is worth it because as it is said that one quarter of what you eat keeps you alive. And other three quarter of what you eat keeps your doctor alive. So it's better to spend on yourself and invest on your health. And of course, you will you will reap the benefits over a period of time, as I am. I would like to share my personal experience. Uh, my own father-in-law, who is uh, almost 73 years old, he started um, doing farming, even though he has uh, three sons. Uh, he started... Uh, Forming in full fledged, uh, he just uh, he was uh, trying with uh, brinjal, tomato, and uh, cotton, onion. There are a lot of things he was trying to do. Uh, um, forming agriculture without having any pesticides, but uh, at one point of time, he was in a, a situation to leave the um, agriculture. He was in a loss. Um, he was trying to give amount uh, from his pocket, but that is not really possible for us, like who is in normal class. So let's increase the farmers. There are many farmers who are in debt. Uh, we should not go with only the organic farming. Uh, obviously, it's uh, better to keep us alive. But even if you want to keep alive the doctors, at least you have to have a food for the first quarter. If you want to keep alive the rest of the quarters uh, for the doctors to be alive. So if you want a food, a lot of farmers uh, should be uh, in, in, of, uh, in the need to continue the agriculture. There are many farmers who is trying to give up the agriculture due to uh, the heavy loss. If we are not using pesticide at all, I definitely will not be able to grow anything. At least let's use a minimal pesticide if it is not avoidable. But we have to increase a lot of people and to support the farmers. And we have to, we also have to involve 
uh, in contributing the farmers or we have if we have any land probably we have to start farming first of all with the uh, basic uh, necessary like a uh, brinjal tomato whatever is needed so that uh, even uh, we can also alive and the, the doctors also can alive with a good food uh, without any so pesticide. Master Kavita, apologies for interrupting your time. Over to you. We have time now, others or we can go in uh, We don't have any more time left. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. So I would request everybody to open their cameras so that we can have the photo session. A humble apology. Everybody, can you open your camera so that we can have our photo session taken? And with a great smile, it looks even better. So, just Poonam, Pragya, you they can open the Pragya yeah. can open. Yes. Poonam also, if she's available. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And uh, I think Sauradatta is there. Okay. I think others are we good to go? Yes. Yeah. Fine. Just one. Yeah. Uh, in three, I think Saurabh has turned on his video. Thank you, Saurabh. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Saurabh. Two, one. Pira. Can we take one more so that it will be the best of the best? Sure, then. Uh, once again, then. In three, go now two. open it. Yeah. In three, two, one. Done. Thank you so much, everyone, for that uh, wonderful session of table topics that we had and the debate, which uh, I think we will go on endlessly if we are left to us. So moving forward, please realize that life is too small to be sad and too long to be smug. So enjoy each and every moment of your life. Live your moment. And the dawn of an era has started with a positive note, with positive people, and definitely doing great job. And amongst us, we have people, stalwarts, who are actually going to lead us right from the front. So before I hand over the podium, to the general evaluator, who is the hawk's eye, who has been observing the meeting with his team of evaluators and uh, tag team. I now call upon the general evaluator, Toastmaster Nadian, to take over the stage and um, go around with his observations. Over to you, Toastmaster Nadian. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Uh, definitely, it's it's not an interesting situation uh, to start the meeting late. But today's world, like Joseph sir uh, was debating, online meetings is the order of the day. When you have dependency on technology, glitches do happen. We don't have a control. But what is something we can pick up on the way is to finish the meeting on time. That is something which is in our control and we need to see how to manage that. We, we had a great meeting today, a lot of learning and interesting things which happened. And even though the meeting started a bit late, um, our Pengloshian SAA ensued, we started the meeting on a positive note. Excuse me, um, Nadia, just start, uh, start with the evaluation, please. Sure, sure, just uh, the first speech, uh, Deepa Man's speech, the evaluator is uh, Saurav Datta. Uh, Saurav, you are uh, around. Probably you can highlight Saurav. Thanks, Saurav. You can start with the evaluation for Deepa Man's speech. Thank you so much, uh, General Evaluator. So whenever I have heard a speech or I get to hear a speech which talks about coaching, mentoring, training, I am always a little nervous or I would say I expect one thing to happen. 
the speaker to get confused between coaching and mentoring, coaching and teaching, and then use these words interchangeably. So, you know, we mentored, I coached, coached, mentored. And to be honest, Deepa, when you started off, I also felt that this is going to be another instance where you are going to, uh, you know, again, use these words, coaching and mentoring very interchangeably. Now, these are two various, two very different experiences being a mentor and being a coach, being a mentee and being a coach. Right? So what I loved is that you brought out a very different aspect of it, which is coaching as a technique to help your mentor, the mentee. Right? And that is something that is totally new. In, in I have not seen many people use this. And this is a very important learning for all of us. That coaching is a technique of mentoring. Right? You may be a mentor to a person, but you can still use coaching as a technique. Wonderfully done that way. As far as the project objective is concerned, I think it's totally, you know, met with this, uh, the way you designed this entire speech. Now, let me come to another aspect or another objective that you had, which is, which, only, or we, which we all have when, when we're giving a speech, which is a speech objective. One aspect was the project objective, where that I have to share a positive experience. Bang on, totally done. What was the objective of your speech? Why did you tell the story of Sneha to us? What did you want us to get from it? Did you want us to be energized, inspired, motivated? Did you want us to learn how coaching can be done with a mentee? That's where I got a little confused. Because while the project objective is met, when I'm listening to your speech, I was not sure that why am I listening to people? What am I supposed to get out of this? Now, why do I say that that was not very clear? If it was supposed to inspire us, then I would have expected more stories. This is what Sneha faced. This is how I helped. Inspired. If you want us to learn something, then techniques. This is what we did. And then this, and then this, and then this. You did all of it to a certain extent. At the end of it, you're leaving me a little bit of learning, a little bit of inspiration and not a complete of any of it. So that's my only feedback that while we as speakers in Toastmaster meetings have to pay attention to the project objectives, let's not sacrifice our speeches and ignore the objective of the speeches and keep that in mind as well. And that's my only feedback and thank you so much Deepa uh, for another great speech, another great performance, another great inspiration story. Thank you. Back to you, General Liberate. Thank you. Can we hear it for the speaker as well as a wonderful evaluation? Thanks a lot, Saurav. And evaluation is one thing, though how many other times, how many other speech evaluation you hear, you learn a lot. And this evaluation is uh, definitely one of those learning a lot uh, duration for us. Thank you so much, Saurav. The speaker number two is Nazneen and the evaluator is Bala Vengar, sir. Can, can we have you on the stage, please? Thank you, general evaluator. Can you all hear me? Yes. Toastmaster Nazneen, uh, your speech reminded me of the, the quote, of all the things that you wear, your expression is the most important one. Boy, you did wear the expression in the right way in your speech. Your speech was like watching an NBA final between LA Lakers and Chicago. You took us to, to that match. You took us to, we can feel watching that match, especially when you started using the props. You used the basketball, the real basketball. You used the whistle. So we could all, we were all in the crowd. We were all actually hoping, cheering for you, for you to win. So you took us to that match that I loved. And you were indeed a Paglosian, as you said, utterly optimistic, which was evident from the way you used the vocal variety, what I call as VP3E. What do I mean by that is the volume, the pitch, the pace, the pause, and the emotion, the way you used all of that to bring us closer to what you wanted to say, listen to that story. So 
That was indeed wonderful. This is something that I loved in your speech. But what I would love to see more in your speech, Toastmaster Nasneem, is the use of triple E. So what do I mean by the triple E? The first E is the engagement. While you did engage us with the story, I wanted you to engage us more by asking certain questions when you started the speech. For example, how many of you here have got that 15 minutes of fame in your life? How many of you here have experienced that duck duck moment in your life? Ask it. Let them, let them ponder, let them think through in their life, which will help you then to connect to that story. That's one. Second aspect of the E is the emotion. While you did involve us, got us all that emotion through your vocal variety, I wanted you to use more of your gestures. I found that you're actually standing still in the same place, but I actually wanted you to use the stage. I wanted you to move across, use the gestures. For example, when you said, my mind froze. I don't know, I got the ball. I don't know what I have to do. Should I pause? Should I not do? What should I do? I was not sure. I froze use the stage. In that way, the gestures along with the volume would give you that engagement. And finally, the message. It was not very clear to me, what was the message in your speech? Are you trying to say the 15 minutes fame is fleeting or are you trying to say pressure at that moment? So overall, in summary, your way you used your vocal variety and the way you actually used the story was really good. And if you could also add all the three E's, engage, with asking some questions, use the gestures and the stage to make the emotions come naturally to you and bang on clear message so that we know exactly what is a call to action from your speech would make it even more entertaining and inspiring and motivating. Back to you, General Abadwit. Thank you, Bola, sir. People take four years or even six years to learn to believe in colleges and you taught us in three minutes. Kudos to Bala sir, the evaluator as well as the speaker. Can we hear it for them please? And as you rightly pointed out, the body movement wise, one place I, I felt um, in, in otherwise a very um, good mo voice modulation and an amazing speech, one place I felt a small action could have made a big difference was when Nazneen Ma'am wonderfully played the MC role and also came in as a speaker. When the role change happened, if she changed the position or done something like that, it would have made a better impact to clearly show that she's playing a different role uh, then. But um, definitely you had been an all-rounder. Not only that, you were MC and a speaker. You also came in and participated in table topic. Amazing, amazing, really. Thank you. And coming uh, back to the essay role, as I mentioned, you, you did fabulously well as a Panglossian SAA and started in a very positive note. Uh, whether the energy could have been a lot more because SAA role is 90% about the energy. So yes, it could have been uh, some more for sure. And one other um, small improvement I could suggest is you, you don't have to mention uh, about uh, probably uh, something similar happened in the past as well, right? Because uh, whoever is here, many of them may not be aware and they don't have to be aware as well. Thank you so much and kudos for a wonderful job as an essay, Adesh. Uh, moving on to the uh, president, he did remember to open the meeting. Many do uh, forget when they do so many other things, they forget this. And uh, he did remember to formally invite the division director and greet him. Uh, on his birthday and uh, so on. One thing in general uh, can be input uh, for us is when we introduce a new member, in uh, most cases, we also try to identify the mentor 
within the club. When we introduce the new member, we try to identify the mentor within the club and introduce them along with the mentor. That need not always be the case for an established Toastmaster coming in as a member, but uh, that is something we can look at uh, doing. And um, other things, when we are um, kind of late with the timing, we can try to keep the theme-related introduction slightly shorter, though it is always a great learning for us. And uh, please keep that going uh, with the right time allocated for that. Thank you so much. And can we hear it for Toastmaster uh, Adarsh, who was the SA and the uh, current running president, uh, sorry, current president, uh, Joseph, sir. Uh, coming to the MC, I did go out of the turn and praise her for the multiple roles she played and played it fabulously well. G gratitude is the best positive energy and definitely it has the magic of bringing in Panglosian effect and she did use it well, Nazneen, and uh, she greeted and thanked uh, Saurav for all his uh, contributions. And uh, she did uh, connect uh, her speech with the theme very well and shared the opinion. And also she did a great job in asking the guests to share their opinion as well and uh, new members. Her introductions were spot on and very good, except for probably for um, uh, table topic master. Probably if we keep the suspense till the end on who is the table topic master and we just keep talking about that person, probably that will uh, give some interest and keep us hooked on with the suspense on who is the table topic master. So that's the only place uh, where she introduced the person and added the credentials uh, later. Um, with this, let me move on to the um, uh, table topic session. Uh, definitely a very, very interesting theme uh, there uh, should be kudos to you. Can we hear it for the MC and table topic master? And uh, definitely few things you can do better. And the first thing for sure is coming out with such an interesting theme. You can speak with that confidence. So you are doing good. So you, you can go and speak with that confidence, uh, Shabi. And with respect to the rules, you, you can identify some simple tricks to see how well we can make the rule clear very easily right the theme is good and it's not very complicated as well but uh, probably plan out and try to talk to somebody and explain and see how to use some tricks to make the rules clear very easily but the best thing you did is to ask whether the rules are clear that gave the opportunity for the audience to uh, come back and uh, get some clarifications uh, done. And the topics are very good for debate as well. Kudos to you, Shubhi. With this, let me call for the timer report. Um, um, others, um, do you want to chime in with the timer report? Sure, I'll quickly take it up from here. Okay, so I'll just quickly state the time is taken by each speaker because of the paucity of time. Our uh, presiding officer, who also had to conduct the induction ceremony, went slightly over time. I think it uh, touched around 15 minutes. Our Toastmaster Nazmin took around 6 minutes and 50 seconds, which is slightly over time. My Toastmaster Nadia, I think you're well within time. You saw to it that you uh, made up for the last time, the 3 minutes and 35 seconds, uh, which was the entire time that the four tactic took. The speakers, our Toastmaster Deepa and Toastmaster Nazmin, uh, took 7 minutes 58 seconds and 6 minutes 25 seconds, respectively. Toastmaster Deepa went over time by 28 seconds. Uh, the debate overall uh, went extremely well, but then initially there were a few hiccups. As a result, uh, we went slightly over time. But as for the other two uh, sets of uh, mini debates that we had, both all our four speakers were well within time. The evaluators, Toastmaster Saurabh, and I'm sorry, DTM Saurabh and DTM uh, Banner, took a total of, uh, believe it or not, uh, both of them took the same amount of time, three minutes and 18 seconds. The so both of them went over time. Uh, on that note, I'd like to hand it back to the general. Thank you. Others, you said three minutes, 18 seconds, huh? Three minutes and 18 seconds, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, that is well within time, right? Because three there's minutes a period, and 30 seconds. Yeah, there's a grace period of 30 seconds. Yeah, uh, well within time. Thank you. Apologies for that. Thanks a lot, Others. 
Um, so um, any uh, grammarian report or will... Yeah, okay, the let's... account to report will be put up on the Rotakers WhatsApp group uh, for your reference. And then uh, that's really it. We don't have anything else. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Adarsh. Can we hear it for Adarsh? Amazing job, thank you. Now back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much, uh, General Evaluator, for that wonderful evaluation with your team. And uh, congratulations to each one of you all. Just one, I'll just, before handing over the baton to the presiding officer, I would like to uh, congratulate and welcome all the new members that who have uh, made, uh, made it in our club. And thank you for joining our club. And I'm sure that you will help us and to elevate our club even more better with your dynamic ideas and also your inputs and feedback. We cannot change the past. We don't know what the future holds for us. But yes, we can live in the moment. So I would now like to pass over the baton to the presiding officer, that is Toastmaster Joseph. Toastmaster Joseph. The stage is all yours, sir. Thank you, Toastmaster Nazneet, and uh, also the general evaluator was uh, really done good jobs in uh, cruising the meeting from the beginning to the end. And I'm also very happy to see DTM Waller Venkat, uh, whom I have seen some few months before, and now I'm again seeing you. I'm very happy to that you are attending our club meeting. I would prefer that please do attend all the time and give us your feedback to for elevate our club in all, all respects. And I thank every one of you who has taken the role either as a table topic master or in all the roles of timer and uh, as a general evaluator, as a Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much for the world and performance of today. And especially today, as I declared this President Distinguished Club, the, even the performance has really been distinguished. And I also thank all those people who have been our guests, including our division director, Saurabh Datta, was a uh, pioneer in our Toastmasters Sri Alam. They always give us some sort of opinion and guide us in all respects. And I thank Saradatta in a special way today for presenting in our club uh, on this day of Distinguished President Toastmaster Club. Finally, I would say that it, we are all really happy because of our achievement and all are responsible to one way or the other, to do these things, to get there, that is where unity is strength. And unity can bring changes. And unity can always lead in a right direction. Because today, a single person cannot handle anything. It is only the unity that brings us to the reach the goal. That is what I mean. And thank you so much once again for each and every role player in this was the I uh, just adjourned meeting number seven to four. Others, you can conduct the poll. Yeah, I put up the voting link on the chat. Oh. So please go ahead and vote for your favorite speakers, vote speakers very, very quickly. You just have to click on the link and then you'll see all the all your favorite. Uh, you see the names of all your favorite speakers and vote takers, so you can go ahead and choose the ones that you felt for the best today. I think it's probably. Yeah, we can probably take another one minute of time, I guess. There's 6.55, another minute.
Uh, I guess the time is up. Uh, let me know in case if anyone's voting right now. Maybe by a show of hands, if anyone's voting, just please feel free to raise your hand or else we are done. Yeah. Over to you, uh, DT and Bala. I can finish voting. I presume everybody's done. All right, in that case, I'm going to stop accepting responses. Thank you very much. I'm going to quickly read out the results from the votes. Uh, thank you very much uh, for voting for your favorite speakers and vote takers. Our best vote taker in today's meeting was, oh, it's actually even between our general evaluator, Toastmaster Nadian, our general evaluator, congratulations, and also our table topics master, Toastmaster Shubhi. A round of applause to both Toastmaster Nadia and Toastmaster Shubhi for being the best vote taker in today's meeting. The best speaker in today's meeting, uh, only by a hat, it is Toastmaster Deepa. Thank you very much and congratulations to Toastmaster Deepa for being the best speaker and an incredible speech from Toastmaster Nasni, who's playing the role of a Toastmaster today as well. The best evaluator in today's meeting, also by a hat, it is uh, DTM Bala Venkat, a round of applause. To DTM Bala Venkat for his incredible evaluation. Welcome to the Speech Weavers Toastmasters Club. Now we had a couple of, uh, we had a total of three debates. Uh, the first debate, again, only by had it is Toastmaster Poonam. Thank you very much for joining us. You were the best uh, speaker as opposed to Toastmaster Joseph, who was incredible as well. The winner of uh, debate number two was uh, Toastmaster Nazneen. A lot of applause to Toastmaster Nazneen. And last but not the least, the winner of debate number three is Toastmaster, distinguished Toastmaster Naveen, Naveen Parvan. Thank you for joining us at Speech Weavers. A round of applause to all the road takers and uh, speakers from today's meeting. And uh, on a scale of zero to five, a lot of people found our meeting very entertaining. So thank you very much.